The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar session today. My name is Shelly James. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Exciting. Today, we're going to talk about S4 HANA meets Fiori, modeling role concepts with Fiori integration with our Support Pack 17 package. Our presenter today is Alessandro Banzer, our security and GRC expert here at Exciting. A couple of things to talk about before we get started. This is one of several new webinars that we have um, as part of our schedule for this year. We have two more on schedule focused um, on our Support Pack 17 updates. There is a, should be a slide at the end of this presentation where you can see the upcoming sessions with a link to our web page where you can see um, any time the updates occur. If you have any questions throughout this webinar, you can use the question panel in your GoToWebinar control panel. Just type in your questions and we'll keep an eye on them. And then at the end of Alessandra's presentation, we'll try to answer those questions for you. This webinar will be recorded and you will receive a link to the recording from GoToWebinar. Later, you will probably receive a, an email from our marketing team um, to follow up and make sure that you all get your questions answered. If you have any additional ones, please send them back to the marketing email or to me at sjames at exciting.com and we can help answer them offline. And now that we're done with that, I'm gonna hand things over to Alessandro and he's gonna walk you through today's session. Alessandro. Thank you, Shelley. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, modeling role concepts, especially in the context of uh, SAP Fiori in, uh, in our tools. So I have a couple of slides prepared to just give you um, a, a general introduction to the topic, and then we'll jump into the system to really show you um, you know how it works and, and and what you can achieve with those new functionalities. Um, before we go there, just one minute about us for those of you that don't know us uh, just yet or that are new customers. Um, we've been around since 2008. We were founded back in Europe and in, in Switzerland. We have offices throughout Europe. Uh, we're in Germany, in Romania, and also in, in, in England. And we're also since 2016, we're in the United States. So we have offices in the US for you know, a couple of people in the US, but over 100 people strong, so we're a growing company. Um, and basically what we do, we do SAP security. We provide uh, services in form of consulting services and training workshops, as well as software solutions in the area of SAP. Um, all our software solutions, they are fully SAP certified. So we have the highest possible certification. We have, we're certified for the s hana cloud. That means our solutions, they operate 100% in SAP standard. Everything that we do follows SAP's best practice and SAP standard. So that's uh, a very unique and very important uh, certification for us. Beyond that, we are SAP Gold Partner. We have uh, different um, recognized expertise uh, statuses in, in different area. We're showing just one here in, in governance risk compliance. Um, and in addition, we're also an SAP education partner. So we do a lot of educational content in form of training. So if you book an SAP training class, um, it, very likely you're going to talk to one of our consultants that is delivering the training for SAP. So very close relationship with SAP and everything that we do, we try to do it in SAP standard following the you know best practices that we preach, but also that um, SAP preaches. With that, let's look into um, the topic of modeling uh, role concepts. I want to show primarily one tool today, which is the, the role designer, where we did a lot of um, enhancements with Support Package 17. Um, for those of you that know the role designer, role designer is, is very often one of the first tools that we're going to use when we do an authorization implementation or an authorization redesign or an s hana um, upgrade or a Fiori implementation. So the role designer is one of those universal tools that really allow us to um, you know, get the role design uh, underway. We will primarily be talking about the role designer. I want to cover a lot of the Fiori functionality. Um, if we have time, I will also break out a little bit into the role replicator, which is one of the tools that we use to implement and 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 um, and do actual changes to roles to Fiori content. 
And I want to show also that some of the new functionalities we have, in particular for uh, SAP Fiori, to build the catalogs, to build spaces, to build the pages, to really get that uh, you know Fiori implementation um, underway. But first, we will definitely focus on the role designer, where we can model um, the concepts. Just very briefly, again, for those of you that know what the role designer does, this might just be um, a recap of what you already know. But the main challenge whenever we implement role concepts or we do, like I said, a role redesign, a new implementation of, of, of a role uh, concept, there's always a lot of different challenges. First of all, when we do a redesign or an S4HANA migration or a new implementation, the hardest part is always to identify what is it that we really need. So, you know, whatever we have available to us, the more we have, the better it is. Um, very often, if we don't have any tools, we have different information that we, you know, are, have loosely available, and it's very hard to match them together and come up with a design, you know, with, with all things considered. When we do a new implementations, we very often forget about the, the impact the design has on the end user, so we're not doing it in the context of a user. We forget about um, uh, compliance uh, aspects like the risk analysis piece, you know, when it comes to critical authorizations, SOD conflicts. Very often that gets forgotten, forgotten simply because we don't have the tools available to us to do that. So that's, that's you know, very often the challenge. Now, obviously, with our tools, with the XMS, we have all that combined. So we can, in, in the role designer, when we do the virtual modeling of, of a role concept, we can read different sources, we can read user information, we can read information from existing roles from PFCG, we can read usage information, for example, from ST03N, from the statistical usage data of the SAP system, we can use sub access control, the usage uh, report for that, or if we have a custom form, we could even import or yeah, yeah, import basically custom information into the role design into those projects that we can virtually uh, work on. At the same time, when we do that virtual modeling of roles, because we have all that information available, we can also do certain type of simulations, simulations in form of doing um, or, or, or um, do calculations of a coverage. You know, if I build a new role or if I change existing roles, what would be the impact on my end users? Would I over-authorize users? Would I under-authorize users? All that can be analyzed as part of, of, of the modeling of that new concept. At the same time, as I mentioned, very often compliance, the compliance aspect is very, very difficult to measure and analyze during that, that the, the design, during the blueprinting of the concept. And with the role designer, we also have the capabilities to run risk analyzes simulations against roles that don't even exist. So we can, before we even build a single role in PFCG, we can already analyze based on the simulation capabilities, for example, from sub access control. So we can integrate with sub access control, or we can leverage the risk analysis engine from the XMS to do any type of simulation. So we can analyze critical authorizations, segregation of duty conflicts on a role level, as well as on a user level. And I'm going to show you that as well. That ultimately also includes uh, Fiori. So we're not just on a transaction level, we basically on an any um, application level where we can run those type of simulations to ultimately you know, come up with the best possible design with as much as, as possible um, considered in, in sense of like the user context, what the user is going uh, to need going forward based on, on, on usage history, um, information as well as also the more GRC aspects to really make sure once we go live we also have a compliant um, uh, a, a role concept at the end of the day. So this is what I'm what I would like to show you. The principle how the role designer works is is very very simple. So basically we can take information from different sources. Here I'm showing the I would say the traditional approach where, for example, the usage information, statistical usage, the history we're taking from production. Um, if you do, you know, a, a, a redesign, an S4HANA migration, then the productive, uh, the production system 
is probably the one that has the, the most valuable information when it comes to usage. Now, obviously, if we do, let's say we do uh, a redesign of, of IT roles for our developers, for example, then obviously we wouldn't take the information from production, we would take it from a development system. So any system can, we can serve as a source to input information into the role designer. In a typical approach, it's from production. But again, we're very open. Um, so basically we're taking information from production, but then the modeling and the redesigning of the, the blueprinting of that new role concept, that happens in development because that's also ultimately where we're going to build the roles then in PFCG. Um, the process is also rather simple. So basically at first, we're modeling everything in what we call a virtual environment. So when we import information, let's say we import user information, we might even import role information, transactional usage information, we import it into, into the role designer, and once it's imported, it's all virtual. So all the data is in our own tables, in exciting tables, custom tables. And we can then do changes. So we can do changes to roles that we imported from PFCG. We can change user assignments, but everything is virtual. That means I can ultimately delete roles. I can change them and I can see what is the impact based on real usage from production without impacting the users or the roles. Because again, it's all virtual. It's just in the role designer. And during that, that virtual phase, we can then do all kinds of analysis and simulations to understand what is really happening. Once we're ready and once we're happy with the design, everything has been uh, signed off and approved, then we can realize that virtual design into real data, into the real um, system, for example, in, into PFCG, so we can uh, create the roles directly in PFCG. We would then obviously, when we, you know, when we do testing, we would test in, in, in the real system, and then all the way um, when come go live, assigning the new roles, for example, to the user. But first, we're really in that virtual state where we just wanna, let's call it, play around a little bit, not really playing, but you know, figuring out and, and simulating. Um, as we go without negatively impacting our end users. I think that's the, uh, the story there. So that's just in general what we do with the role designer. And we will see it here in just a minute. So one more slide and then I'll jump over um, uh, into the system. There's a, new, a few new things with Support Package 17 um, that we added. We have now different modes, display modes, very, very simple stuff. Um, a couple of different uh, reports. We have different ways to document what we do as part of the of the um, of of, of the um, virtual role design. So, for example, if we assign roles or remove roles from users, we can also add comments while we're removing something or while we're adding roles. Um, before we were just able to do it, but we couldn't really document from you know uh, you know if we want to backtrace why we did certain things. It's better if we can if you have the ability to to make certain comments and then obviously the the biggest thing i would say in general with support package 17 or one of the bigger things was the capabilities and the functionalities we have in regards to sub fury so now also in in, in doing the role design we can already work with fury we can build the catalogs we can build the spaces um, do all that stuff it's integrated with the sap standard a Fiori content manager um, so that we can leverage that information and we can work with it during the role design. So that means when we, um, let's say we do an S4HANA migration, so we're on ECC, we're moving to S4HANA, and as part of the migration, we also want to implement Fiori. Now, not only do transac transactions, transactions change where we have, you know, obsolete transactions that are replaced with other transactions, or there's transactions that are going to be replaced with Fiori applications. We can not only do the transactional stuff, now we can also, as part of design, already work on that on, on the Fiori content as well, so that we can have that integrated, and we can also simulate and run any type of analysis the same way we were able to do it before with transactions, function modules, now also for the Fiori stuff. That's very important. And Fiori, obviously, um, is, is a big topic, uh, I would say, for 
uh, for pretty much every organization because um, you know Fiori really uh, came a long way and it's, it's a very powerful tool from the user experience perspective. So I think sooner or later every customer will be talking about SAP Fiori and that's why we also have so much emphasis on that to really provide tools um, you know to help you implement. Let me first show what we do in, in the role designer, I might then also quickly, if I have a little bit of time, go into the role replicator just to show a few things how we can also must change and must create and you know do a lot of things in mass when it comes to um, Fiori because that's also it kind of goes hand in hand. But let's really first um, talk about the role um, the role uh, designer. So let me move over here. So I'm in um, one of my um, test systems. So I'm in a S for Hana. Uh, box basically my S4T system, just an S for HANA um, environment. As you know, our tools are, um, you know, they work in, on different uh, releases. So if you're on ECC, the functionality will still be available. So there's no, there's a little bit dependency, but if you're, if you patched your system in the last five, six, seven years, then, you know, you, you can, you can easily get the, the latest version of, of, um, of the XMS. So let's go into the role designer which is one of the modules um and maybe before i go there so if, if there's any questions throughout the webinar just use the the questions panel type it in i try to answer them as i go otherwise we'll pick it up um in the end with the role designer um just briefly for those of you that don't know it yet the role designer works with different projects so we can create new projects and that's just a project within the role designer now, if we do a redesign, it can be that we do one project for the entire system or we break it out in, into smaller chunks. Um, you know, especially with very large uh, systems, it often makes sense to break it out into smaller pieces. You know, we have maybe a, a project for the finance group, a project for the HR people, project for, for MM and so on to, you know, and, and maybe also because, you know, multiple people, multiple, multiple consultants are working on on the project. I already have one created, so we don't have to create one from scratch, but creating, you know, is, is super simple. So I have one here, should be the last one. Oh, no, I want to create already one today. So I just created one here. Um, and we can see, and I have my screen a little bit large, so you can, you can see it better. That also means that I have to scroll a little bit more than uh, I want to. But basically what we can see here is, let's just scroll a little bit. I have a virtual project. Um, I have 125 users loaded. The 125 users in my test system, they use 707 transactions, almost 200 RFCs, a whole bunch of other authorizations, reports, web services, you know, Fiori back, uh, backend services and so on. So I can just see roughly see how many people do I have and what do I have? I also loaded usage information. So I have, I have four months worth of usage information available that, you know, transaction usage, function model usage that we can then see. Um, and I did not load any roles. So basically here I'm saying I'm, I'm starting from scratch. Um, we could obviously load roles from PFCG, make them virtual. We can quickly import one. So you just see what, what happens. And then we can also uh, create some uh, from scratch. So just a, a small project just for um for that purpose let me quickly go through just some of the basic functionalities so in role designer we have what we call a designer view and then we have reporting views and usually we work between the two majority of the time i personally spend more on the reports because that's the reports are very powerful the designer is more a ui like a like a a, a drag and drop hands-on um way to do changes and, and, and see what, what, um, what we have. The reports is where the powerful, where the machine learning and the, all the algorithms that we have, they come into play in the reports. Well, we start with the designer first, just so we get um, a, a quick understanding of what we see here. Um, and let me just move this a little bit. So what we can see here is basically on the left-hand side here, we have my usage information. So I have users, I have I loaded the usage from ST03N, the statistical usage data. And I see here, I have a group now by caller, so I can see, for example, for myself, events, so that's my user ID. I can see what transactions I have ran, 
in those four months. I can see that for transaction codes, I can see that for function modules, web services, Fiori stuff, and so on. So if I switch over here to function modules, for example, I can see that these are the function modules that I used in, in, in the last uh, four months from the usage perspective. So here on the left-hand side in this column here, we have usage. We can group this you know, differently. We, right now I have a group by the caller. I can also group it by components, by, you know, based on the users, data by user group, a function by department, and there's different other columns we can add to group usage. But over here, we basically have the transaction or application history. In the middle here, I have my roles. Right now, we don't have any. That's why we don't see any here. And then on the right-hand side, I have my user information. So here I can see, let me just make this a little bit smaller. Um, like I said, my screen a little bit uh, unlucky here, but that's all right. So we can see here, I have my user, Abe answer. Again, I can see here the usage I have. So again, if I double click here, for example, I have used 130, 38 different applications between uh, transaction codes, function modules, web dimpros. Here we see uh, services, backend services from Fiori, for example. So different things that I have used, I can see um, here. And then I can always see, you know, how many are still un unauthorized based on my virtual project. So right now, no one is really authorized. So they're all um, at zero percent because I'm starting from scratch. I'm doing a complete, you know, new implementation of my authorizations, maybe with Fiori in scope, maybe not. Either way is possible. And I'm creating um, or, or modeling that uh, role concept from, from ground up. What can I do? There's a couple of ways how we can create roles. Like I said, we can import them from PFCG, play with them, rename them, do whatever. Or we cannot just say here, create a new role. I can just double click and say here, create a new role. I call it webinar one. Um, I give it maybe a role description, webinar test role. Then I have a new role created, obviously just an, an empty role. I don't have any T codes in here yet. No, you know, no Fiori stuff, nothing in here. Uh, just yet. Now, what we can do in the in the designer here, I can drag and drop. So I can, for example, go here by usage in the simplest form, where I just go by user and say here, oh, okay, what what transactions? I'm filtering for transactions. What transactions did Alessandro use? And then I go here and I say, oh, yeah, actually, actually, what I'm what I want to authorize here is all the exciting stuff. So I just take the exciting transactions here. I select them. I drag and drop them over to the role. Now we can see here that role has now a couple of T codes. So a uh, couple of T codes here. Um, and I can you know, remove them, add more. I can go to another user or, or, or group it differently and add more transactions, function modules, Fiori stuff, whatever I want to add to this role. Then I can also simulate the assignment of that role. So I can say here, yeah, this role actually is for Alessandro. And maybe I don't like the name. I can just right click and say, oh, actually, we, we want to rename it because we don't want to call it test. We want to call it BC uh, security. So this is security access role. So we can also rename because at this point, the roles are all virtual. They don't, they're not in PFCG where we cannot rename. We have to copy here. We can, we can do whatever we want to do because it's, it's just virtual. Then I have the role and I can drag and drop it over to my user, for example, to Abe answer. Now we can immediately see here that the percentage changed. So now I'm, uh, I'm my coverage, my percentage coverage went up to almost 16%. Why is that? That is because based on my usage, I have used 138 transactions. I am still unauthorized for 116. So in here, we only have, if my math is correct, we have only 22 transactions in here. That's why, you know, there's still a gap of 22. The 22 equal to almost 16% of the entire coverage. Now, obviously, if I would take my entire user over here and just, you know, copy more transactions in here, this would change over here. So now I'm still an authorized for 40. That's probably the, the function modules and, and the web services and so on. So what that means is while I do the role modeling, 
I can also simulate the assignments because I'm not blind and just create roles and then not know who will get the roles. I built them in the context of the user assignment. And based on the, on the history, what the user was doing in the past, we can see how well would that role work based on a transactional perspective. We're not talking authorization values just yet. At the moment, we're just on an application level. The authorizations, they come a little bit later. Um, so we can see here, I, I built a role here with drag and drop. Obviously, I can, I can build another role where I just say BC, let's call it uh, developer uh, access. Um, I could I could add T codes here manually and say just you know add menu object to role. I just say okay actually what, what do we need? We need SC, SC11. You know that's a typical developer transaction. We have to add that to this role. So we can also do that manual. We can upload different different ways. We also have different function templates. So I can go here and say hey let's apply a function template. Function templates are predefined templates that we uh, deliver with the tools. And for example, here, if we go, there's like one, uh, where do we have here, for example, there's developer access. You can see what transactions do we have in here, even exciting transactions, because obviously, you know, we have, uh, if there's um, the XMS installed and those transactions are also valid, I just select them all. I can even copy the, the template name and the role description and then just add them. And then, you know, oops, uh, looks like I forgot to add the friends T codes. I only did. Sorry, my bad. The tool is so powerful that I sometimes forget myself what we want to add. Here we have to say that if we want to add all the mandatory ones and the recommended ones, different ways how we can do that. Let me just do that again. And then we can see now we have basically built a developer role. Okay, so here the goal really is to model that design, get up and, 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 and start and also at the same time simulate the assignment. So again here, I can assign it to the users, might change it or not, um, and then I can see that. This is just the, the virtual modeling. So obviously here, right now I just added transaction codes, but we can also add function modules and we can also add the Fiori content. Let me get to that in, in just a second. First, let's go over to the reports. So I said the reports are much more powerful than the designer. And here we really have a lot of algorithm, machine learning and, and different type of reports that provide us information. We have simple reports like, for example, on a user level where we can just have an overview of our users. So I can see here, let me just go into a full screen mode where I have my user again here. Um, I can see at the moment I have two roles assigned. I see the information similar to what we have before. But here, for example, I also can see a surplus. Surplus means transactions in excess. Transactions I haven't used that based on the uh, roles assigned to me now in the virtual in environment will basically over-authorize me, stuff that I haven't, um, I haven't used. Now, what's very powerful here is I can now do type of analysis. So for example, here, if you have access control, for example, we can reach out to access control and run a simulation based on the virtual roles. So I'm not 100 sure that it's connected. So I just use our internal um, framework because I know for sure this works. And here I can, for example, say, I want to check for critical authorizations or even critical combinations. So let's just run for critical authorizations. So we have a variant here. We just use this is basically the rule set from from in, in GRC uh, terms. And now I run a risk analysis, a simulation against my user. And what we can see here now is I have my user and it's flagging up for different conflicts. So the authorization ID, if you talk GRC terms, that will be the risk. Um, and we can see whether we're violating a risk or we don't. So we see that here basically with the, the traffic light, um, you know, green obviously okay, red is bad. Now here, for example, I have something like client change options, just one, I've just picked one randomly. Now if we double click here, we can even go and understand why that is. And here we can see why that is. That is because in the, in, in, in the rule set, 
the function is defined, you know, with stabu uh, cli and probably stabu num for table t triple zero to have change options. And we can see that here. So you can see here through the developer access role. In the developer access role, we have SSC4 maintained. That's what we added when I added the function template. But the risk analysis goes even a level beyond that. And we're, we're checking authorization values. Because obviously the risk analysis <clears throat> looks into authorizations. How do we do it? How do we get that from? We get that from SU24. So basically we're using the authorization proposals that would come into PFCG and we're analyzing, we're analyzing those. Now here you can see in the column role from, we can see what would be the value that comes from the role. Again, the role doesn't exist, but that's what we're assuming. It comes here as a star because for, for the, for in, in SC24, the proposal for the activity is either a star or it's open. And when it's open, we just assume the worst case, that will be a star. And we can see here, for example, on the on the table, the, the, the field table, we actually get T triple zero because that's maintained in S24 the correct way. So we're not assuming star, we're assuming a T triple zero, and that's what will come from S24. And on that level, we're doing the risk analysis. So we're actually looking into authorizations and we're doing a simulation, either either with our own engine or with sub access control GRC. And then we can already, before we even build a role, we can already, you know, do certain type of, of, um, of analysis to, for example, understand SODs on a user level, on a role level, and so on. That's one of the, I would say, most powerful things of, um, of the entire role modeling that we do with the role designer. Now, what I want to show you is also the Fiori piece, because that's obviously um, very new. So we have here the ability to also load Fiori objects. We can look into catalogs with the tiles and target mappings, and we can get a little bit of understanding, and we can also add that to roles. So let me um, show you that. Let's run this one here. I might just take a second. Can we can yes. we answer a couple questions before you get into the Fiori side? Yes, let me pull them up as well so I can see them. Yes, so there was one question in, in regards to um, you know multiple ECC system, if you can consolidate the history from multiple system into one, that is possible. We can do that. Um, um, and then with, with naming conventions, yes, as well. So we can enforce naming conventions. We have um, um, a customizing table for naming conventions where we say the first character must be a Z and then you know an underscore, and then the third characters must be, I don't know, the, the component like FI, CEO, BS, and so on. And we can maintain it as, as, as a rule, and then we can check it as part of the um, of, of the role design. And if it's I'm not sure if it's active here. Um, but otherwise we can, let me quickly, we can come back to this report just to answer the question. Obviously, if I have a role, I could also um, here analyze and I can then, um, where do we have it? Check here, check naming conventions. So I can see here, this role is against naming convention because this is the convention, this is the, the way it's named here. Uh, you might not, uh, but it basically says, you know, the first four characters must be ZVR underscore or ZZAP underscore or ZXIT underscore, and this doesn't match the naming convention. So obviously the naming convention we have here is not, not the, the best example, but yes, we can, we can enforce that as well. And we can also check. And if we create the role, we should have seen the warning on the bottom left that would say, hey, uh, the role doesn't match naming convention. And then otherwise we can also check it here and then do the, you know, go here and, and, and change the role name and, um, uh, you know, correct it. Hope that makes sense. So let me go back to the Fiori status. So it took a, a minute to load. That is because we're loading content from the content manager. For those of you that have used the content manager in SAP, the standard content manager, it, it's always a little bit slow to initially load because it's loading a lot of data. So it just loads it. And then we have the information available here. So what can we see here? Um, we can see we have, for example, here, we have uh, two catalogs. So these are uh, catalogs. 
And then here we have, I think the spaces, should be spaces, um, different Fiori objects loaded. So from catalog spaces, we can also load, we can also see it here. Um, we can also import catalogs, we can import groups, spaces, and so on into the role designer. And so let's say we have a catalog here and we want to add that catalog to a role, then we can also do that directly from here. So we can select the ones here and then say add to role. And I, you know, select the roles I want to add it to. Let's say developer access to go into both, select them, and then we're adding the catalog to that role. And if I now would go back and run the risk analysis simulation again against that role or one of the roles or all the roles that have the catalog, it would also consider the catalog. So if there's any, you know, um, you know, the catalog, there's applications, they call backend services. If those backend services have um, S24 proposals that, you know, um, are, are maintained in the rule set as, you know, standard rule set or the XMS, we have that in there as well. Then we would also find um, conflicts with those backend services, you know, for also for Fiori stuff. Um, same here I was doing for the catalog. The spaces obviously is not really authorization relevant, I would say. They don't really impact the authorizations. The space is more from display purposes for Fiori. And if you don't necessarily understand what I'm what I'm talking about, we have a very good series about Fiori authorizations, how to maintain. If if Fiori is new to you, then just um just go on our homepage on the on-demand webinars. We have like eight or so webinars about Fiori from the very basic order to very advanced stuff. You know, if you want to understand how that space page concept works, for example, there's one ved webinar dedicated to just that. Um, but for those who that know it, I mean, here the space as well is one of the things that we add to the role that goes into the role menu because that ultimately then defines the uh, the applications the user sees on the Fiori Launchpad. So we can also add those now directly here in um, in, in role designer. Same way we select the ones we want to add, we give it to the roles. Um, you know, confirm that that's what we want to add. Get the confirmation has been added. So here we see the catalogs, the groups, um, and spaces. We can also look into um, like just overview perspective, like we can look into the catalogs with the tiles. So we see here, I have different catalogs added here um, and I can see what are the tiles, you know, the Fiori applications. If you want to go into the apps library and want to, you know, look it up, this is um, the, the Fiori ID. And, you know, otherwise we just see the, most important information about the app here as well. So very good overview reports as well that SAP Center doesn't offer to see what's what's in a catalog, for example. We can see that here, just you know, a, a straightforward table. I think I have more catalogs down here, or this is maybe just the one. Actually, here we have we have a custom catalogs as well that we created um, that I've loaded here for just transaction codes. Um, that's also from an overview perspective. We can do that. Um, we can also maintain the catalog. So if I say, hey, yeah, this catalog, but there's maybe something in there that they shouldn't have, like they shouldn't, and this is an SAP standard, we don't want to change that one, but let's say here, they shouldn't have that, you know, these two um, applications, even though it's GUI transactions that we can call from Fiori, but we want to take them out. We could also just um, remove them here. I don't want to do it because that actually changes the catalog. Um, I don't want to do that because maybe someone else, is not, it's not my catalog, so I don't want to mess someone else's project up, um, but that's also possible directly out of here. Um, then also from a rose perspective, um, you know, if you, and maybe I didn't save the project yet, let me quickly save it. Um, oh, I think I added a catalog that doesn't, um, doesn't have any applications in there to the role. Let me quickly get, um, other one that has for sure applications that one here let me quickly add it to a role so it is these these two roles all right so now we have a catalog added that actually has applications in the catalog and now if you go into the report list roles with catalogs we also get a breakdown so we can now see here the roles that i have and then we can also see what catalog they have assigned and also what applications that catalog would pull into the role. 
also a very very good report um, to you know really understand what access a user will get at the end of the day you know for for sign offs and for reviews and if we work on on the roles this is very valuable information here directly in the role designer as well um, and then last but not least we have one more where we can also look into related apps uh, from from catalogs perspective also loads uh, uh, takes a minute to load because again it's going out to the content manager where we can maintain one at a time here we can just or look at one at a time here you can look at everything but to load it to load it into our reports we're basically pulling the content manager the source and that is just not super performant it's a lot of data obviously that's why it's just taking here um, a second no excuse that's just that's just the way it is um so overall if you if you have known and used the role designer before i think that the biggest change or the biggest new thing right now is that fury because fury again very important we can now in the same means as we were doing redesigns for uh, i would say more the transactional world or even for rfcs we can now also do that directly in the role designer for fury whether you make fury as part of your s4 migration you inter, in, uh, introduce fury into your uh, standard roles like your regular uh, business uh, end user roles or whether you create new individual fiori roles all that is now possible with the role designer in the same means as we did it you know again for um for the old world let's let's say i see there's another question um, there's a question regarding whether the reports <coughs> can also look at the live system after the roles are created deployed you mean from a from a risk analysis perspective for example yes we can um, as soon as the roles are in the system so if we will see that i'll show that in, in, in a second or oh, actually let me just show it um, if you go to the roles we remember these roles are, are virtual we can see here in the column pfcg they don't exist so if i run a risk analysis now or do any type of analysis it's it's looking into the virtual role that means we're using s24 information you know from an authorization perspective and we're filling in the blanks with a star you know from a technical perspective now from here i can push these rows into pfcg so i select them i say push it asks me if i want to override if they exist i say yes it asks me if i want to override the text i say yes just two questions then it takes a second and now we have the roles created and now if i refresh here so if i just hit the refresh button we can now see we have the pfcg so now these roles are in pfcg um, if i double click just to uh, quickly show you they are now in pfcg so we see oops um you know the role the description comes from role designer i have even the ability to maintain long text now it's just just did basically the the general information when it was generated it came from role designer but i can also maintain that in, in in the role designer and the role is obviously built through the role menu because we didn't talk authorizations just yet but it's now built through the role menu so the services are packaged you know into into services you know this is all the the way it, it has to be done we see here the catalogs we see here um that should be a group or is it a space this is a space so we see here we have the spaces here we have the catalogs so all that and with the applications obviously you know it's now added um directly into the into the role if i go back so now the role is a pfcg role and now obviously if i now analyze it takes information from pfcg so as soon as soon as the the role is in pfcg and we have the authorization data in pfcg then it's taking that information um from a process perspective if we um implement at at this point when we are done with the design and we push the rows over to pfcg then very often the work in role designer stops because now we have to talk authorizations implementation of that so we're basically leaving the role design and we leave that kind of behind us and we use all our other tools to maintain the authorizations to test the roles we have automation tools to um, that help us you know test the roles 
and 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 find the the correct values, auto station values on on a field level, based on on a productive uh, uh, life system, for example. Because at the moment, if I go back to the role, if we go back here now, obviously, if you go into the authorization data, there's still a lot of open authorizations, as as you would expect, right? I mean, we we haven't done anything with the authorizations just yet. Now, what we have, the better SC24 is, the more will be populated. We have tools to populate the entire organization values to do all the the, um, the the org modeling, all that stuff we can do. And here, if we have fields where we don't know the values, we have, what we would use is the productive test simulation to look into a live system, a productive system, and see what is it that the users are actually using. And again, here, here it comes back to what I was saying earlier, when we built the roles in the role designer, we built them in the context of the users. So I know, based on my role designer project, if, if I've done it the correct way, I know that this developer access role has to be assigned to Alessandro and five other developers, because I built it that way and I was simulating and doing all the virtual stuff in the context of those users. Now, if I go and test and I want to understand what authorization do they really need, I know already who are the five users that will get the, the role at the end of the day. And so I can then shadow those users in production from a live system and get the values back into the role with our tools. We can do that semi-automated, I would say, to get the values back in here into S24, into the roles and so on. But that's again, that's beyond the role designers. The role designer really, the goal is to get us to here, to have concept roles built that are you know compliant to some extent. Obviously, when it comes to the SOD conflicts, like I was saying, for all these fields here where we have basically no values in, in the simulation, we're we're just expecting a star, the worst possible. So worst case scenario, that means in the role, I can I can make the I can restrict it further, and then I might not have those um, uh, critical authorizations or SOD conflicts. But just you know, due to design, very often that's that's more than than we can expect. And if there's certain conflicts where we say, no, actually, I don't think the role will have that. Once we restrict, then we we know that already. But at least we know what would be the worst uh, possible uh, scenario. All right. So let me go back. So I have to get back out here. Let me just generate it. Doesn't matter. Just a test roll. Delete it later. Um, all right, so, and we see again, the entire Fiori stuff, I think that's what's really new about Support Package 17. One thing I also wanted to show, and this is just, just leaving the role designer here for a second, is the entire creation, because sometimes we're not necessarily, I mean, we might, we still have to create the Fiori content. We still have to build the, the spaces, the pages, we have to build the catalogs, all that stuff also needs to be built. Now for that, in, in SAP standard, where we use the Launchpad Designer or the Content Manager, it's a one by one process. So we're creating one catalog, we're creating one space, we're creating one page. It's always one by one. There's no mass features to do that, you know, with mass processing tools. What we have as part of the role replicator, and again, this is it goes hand in hand with the with the modeling. What we can do here is we can mass create. So we can mass create catalogs, spaces, pages, sections. And when I say mass create, we do that through Excel uploads. So we can create, uh, we prepare a list in Excel, and then we upload it and the tool creates it for us. So if I wanna create 10 catalogs, I create 10 catalogs. I just you know, have a format in Excel, I give it the name, the description, and, and you know, I shoot them up and they're created. And then in the second step, I'm going to assign the tiles and target mappings to those catalogs. Again, an Excel file. Column one is the catalog name. And then in column two and three, we're, we're, we're giving the apps and we're adding it and just must replicate and create the Fiori stuff um, in, 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 you know, in, in no time compared to what you would do in standard. Obviously, not just for catalogs, the same for the spaces, the same for the pages, the same for the sections, we can do the all in mass. 
we also have abilities to do certain modeling as part of of more like a like a like a user interface like for example here let me maybe just quickly show you one if we do um let me just pick one catalog here let's just hope we get lucky um because i didn't prepare that so i don't know which one we 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 it would be a good one um we just take any one we can actually just take an sap standard one i don't think it matters too much and again here we're loading from the content manager it's taking a second to get all the information together but what we will see here now i'm just looking for one catalog and 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 we can then see you know we can we can now see so this is the catalog the way it is and we have here you know expert modes available so we can export to excel re-upload and do different things directly out of here now here i was just doing one catalog not 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 a lot of information but we see there's a catalog that has you know different tiles and then we can see here you know this is basically the tiles with the the target mappings and it's assigned to this um um yeah catalog basically and from here and I, this is not the best uh view to show you or the best selection i've done but here if you would select more apps and more catalogs we have basically like a like a matrix view of applications and then here in the horizontal we have the catalogs and we can see okay this app is part of that catalog is part of that catalog and that app is here and there and then we can also double click so we could just double click here and i can i don't think i can remove because this is a, this is an sap standard catalog so i cannot remove otherwise i could just double click and then it would remove it so it would just take the the, the app out so i would double click here remove it because it has to go over here and double click over here it's added there so we also have that ability to just with double clicking you know add um, applications for the fury uh, ties and target mappings to the catalogs so different ways of how we can do it either must upload through excel we have that more ui driven approach where we can do the double clicking if we know what we're doing and we, we know what we see this can also be very helpful um, especially if we have a good selection on 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 the tiles you know if you know 50 tiles and we know where, they, where they're supposed to go then this is also one thing that can be um, not just a good overview to see what we have but also to make quick changes um, uh, you know to to make some adjustments so different tools obviously here um in in, the, in that area um of fiori let me quickly check i just see there was a question so i don't want to miss anything um one second yeah so there was there was one question regarding um the, the launchpad service so if you're using the launchpad service from from btb from the business technology platform um you can still use the role designer um, for the backend content because with the with the launchpad service all you do is you're basically reading the content from your on premise into the launchpad service in the cloud the catalogs and the spaces still need to you still have to create it and authorize the users in in your backend and then the users just use the the, the launchpad service in the cloud which is a cloud solution just a SaaS solution um, as as more the user interface but the 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 catalogs and all the information the authorizations they still come from from the or can come from the back end the, the catalogs for sure the spaces for sure authorization wise there's um, different things we you know from a front end authorization the back end authorizations but the back end authorizations they, they have to be in the back end so what I was showing in the role designer, that still needs to happen, even though you use the Launchpad service. <clears throat> the Launchpad service at the end of the day is that central hub deployment scenario that we had many years ago in a better way. Um, we don't have the, the dependencies, dependency issues we had with the, with the central hub deployment where we have one Fiori and multiple backends. Um, with the BTB, with the Launchpad service, we can achieve that. So we have basically one consolidated launchpad, Fiori launchpad. So the user, they only need to log into one Fiori launchpad. And then from there, they can access all the different applications they're authorized to. So that, that could be applications from my S4HANA on premise 
can be applications that come from S4 HANA public cloud, can be apps that I have from GRC, can be apps that come from BW. It's all in one central launchpad in the cloud. But from all of those systems that are connected, my S4 HANA, my CRM, my BW, whatever the case might be, my GRC system, the authorizations or the, the content, like the catalogs and the spaces, the pages, that still comes from the backend. So I still have to maintain that. And that's what the role designer um, can do. I hope that answers the question, but um, that, that's important. Um, let me see, I think, I think that answers that. Perfect. Um, yes, so Support Package 17, again, in, 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 in form of the role modeling, Fiori, I think that's the, 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 the biggest change there or the biggest um, news that we have is the support for Fiori. I, I personally, not just because I work for exciting, I really think this is very, very important. If you have the tools and you have to, and you have to implement Fiori, this will be a game changer. It will save you so much time. Um, we just went through on my colleagues, and I think they joined the call as well. We had just a, a, a go live a couple of weeks ago where they were um, heavily implementing Fiori. So all the users, we, we did basically a Fiori station where all the business users, they go on Fiori. So that means we had to create all the Fiori content, all the catalogs, the spaces, the pages, the, the sections, all that had to be created. And we were creating hundreds of catalogs, hundreds of, of or more than hundreds, a couple of hundreds of, of, of pages and, and, and different spaces and, and, and sections. It was just a lot of work. And it was still a lot of work, even though we had the tools, but unimaginable what it would have been without the mass features. You know, just if you can create 200 catalogs in 10 minutes compared to, I don't know, a couple of days worth of work, that's tremendous. Especially, and as always in, in projects, you know, the customer said, you know, we have everything set in stone. This is the design. And then we went ahead and we created it without the tools it would have taken probably two weeks to create. And then they realize, oh, actually the design is not perfect. Let's change it. And I'm pretty sure a couple of you guys will smile when I say that, but that's, that's just day to day. That's what happens. And the great thing here is, you know, if I create them, I can also just go here and export what I have created. I have it in Excel. I do my changes in Excel, re-upload, it's changed. So from that perspective, not just the first implementation, but also if we have to redo the implementation or we have to you know uh, new we have new ideas then i think you know it's it's also uh, just very very helpful to have the tools available perfect i think that brings me to the end of what i wanted to show um so these are i would say what, like shelly was saying initially we have a couple more webinars planned this was just the the, the everything around uh, Fiori with the role modeling. We have a uh, couple more webinars. Let me just fast forward there um, about the EEM scenarios, you know, with different logging, um, like firefighting um, type of scenarios you can do. Did a couple of um, new things there as well, which are interesting for those who are looking to uh, firefighter solutions. And we then also have a big change, or not a big change, but a very important change in the um, in the role replicator as well, when it comes to the organizational um, structure where we can do the org replication. There's a few things just to uh, maybe um, explain a little bit. We have uh, new things when it comes to non-org fields. So we can now also replicate non-org fields, which I'll explain in the, in the webinar then what that means, but that's possible. And we can also build references within the org structure. So if you have your org structure built, and you want to reuse or repurpose certain um, organizational sets, values, and so on, we can also reference that. So we can, you know, position an org set in, in, in the structure at different levels. And it's kind of like a, like a relationship, the reference. So we can always change the, the master and it, it basically replicates through the organizational um, structure as well. So very good changes in that perspective as well makes the life so much easier if you're using that. Um, I think two more very, very, very interesting webinars to see what's new with uh, Support Package 17. With that, Shelly, anything else I, I missed? Otherwise, I think we're pretty good on time. Yep, no, I, 
I think you're good. Um, just let everybody know that we do have a YouTube playlist and um, this recording will also get moved there. Um, you should have all received an email with the link to the playlist. If you don't have it, um, drop me or Alessandro a, an, uh, an email and we'll send you the link. Um, again, Alessandro is a banzer at exciting.com and I am S James at exciting.com. So um, let us know and we'll send it out again if you don't have it. Um, every session will be a part of that playlist. And if you have the link bookmarked, um, you can use that over and over again and they will be updated automatically. So other than that, um, thanks everybody for attending. Um, great uh, responses and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, have a great rest of your day. Thank you everyone.